Hi everyone, we'll be going live in just a couple of minutes here. So we're going to be starting in about two minutes and uh, just I guess a little bit of background since we have a little bit of time on myself. I've been working here for about a year uh, and a little bit of change in about seven months I think before the coronavirus I've been working here. So this whole process has really started to kind of bring in new ideas about our collaborative space and sort of where we're at in the downtown area. So. It's going to be really cool to have our two guests on to be talking about sort of what we're going to be doing downtown. And we'll be getting here in about one minute. All right, so we're going to start here. Uh, my name is Vincent Burke, and I'm a student coordinator for UCCS Downtown. Like I mentioned, I've worked here for about a year today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Downtown COS Recovery in this series, uh, which is the Feed Your Curiosity series on this episode, and uh, what students and citizens can do to participate in helping uh, Downtown Colorado Springs recover. Uh, I will be talking with Alex Armani Munn and Claire Swinford with the Downtown Partnership, which is a nonprofit advocacy organization for Downtown Colorado Springs. Welcome, Alex and Claire. We're going to bring Alex on in here just for in just a second. Maybe ask Alex if he's requested access. Alex, have you requested access yet, or sent an invite over to us? Sorry, everyone, we're just having a couple of technical difficulties here. So, Alex, there should be a pink button in the comments if you scroll up or down that allows you to request access from the host, and we'll go ahead and bring you on to the stream. I've not gotten a prompt yet. An invite should pop up, right? Yes, it should be a pink button if you scroll up in the feed. Um, right when you first join the live, uh, you should have seen like a, a pink button in the feed on, on the stream. Claire Hi, Claire. joined. Hey, Claire. Um, Claire, did you get the request to join the go live? I don't think Alex has seen it yet on his side. Should be a pink button right when you join the stream that allows you to request, um, if you scroll up in the feed, it allows you to request to join with the host. Looks like this. Looks like this pink button here in the top of the feet. She said, yeah. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Right, we're going to start with Claire real quick first uh, while we get Alex figured out there. So Claire is connecting in and we'll start with questions for her. 
Okay, let's see if this works this time. Hi, Claire. How's it going? Nice. Good to see you, Vince. Good to see you, too. Can you hear me just fine on your end? I sure can. can I, how about you? Outstanding. Yes, I can hear you very well. Wonderful. So we'll just get started with kind of um, some of the easier going questions, but a little bit less, you know, more relaxed. Could you tell us what the new normal was going to look like for downtown in the post-COVID world? Well, I'll tell you what it looks like today. Uh, you know, you're seeing new art on the streets coming in, uh, which is usual for, for this time of year. It's always a nice sign of uh, great things to come in the summer when you're seeing new sculptures and murals popping up. Uh, but you're going to see people enjoying uh, all of the great things going on downtown in a little bit of a different way. Um, you're going to see colorful dots on street corners that are helping encourage people to stand at least six feet apart. Uh, you're going to see uh, the chamber and EDC's wonderful uh, safety precautions posters on the doors of storefronts, uh, encouraging uh, people to wear their masks and uh, observe proper social distancing. Uh, you're going to see a lot of shop owners who are requesting that because uh, this is one way where you can really take care of our small business owners in a meaningful, concrete way is to make sure that we're masked up when we're patronizing those local businesses. But my goodness, the doors are open. They are excited to see you. We're seeing all sorts of restaurants doing a wonderful carry out. And in fact, every block downtown has a special orange hooded meter that is just for people who are picking up carry out. Now, all meters are still free downtown. Uh, but if you're just looking to swing in to pick up your chicken and waffles from Odyssey or your tacos from Jose Muldoon's, just look for that orange meter. And that spot is going to be left free because it's just for people who are dropping in, dropping out out five minutes only uh, to get whatever uh, wonderful uh, downtown cuisine they're, they're looking to have for their Memorial Day weekend. Um, same thing with our- Wonderful. Yeah, go ahead. Let's move on to the next question. Oh, sure. Um, oh, actually, really quickly, if we could go back for one second, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the Legacy Loop? Oh, my goodness. Yes, I can't believe I forgot. Uh, Downtown, of course, is uh, blessed to be completely enclosed by the Legacy Loop, which is that 10K system of trails that surrounds the downtown. Uh, some people call it General Palmer's Emerald Necklace because a lot of the parkland actually was deeded to the city by the city's founder um, at the at the end of his life. I approaching a, what would that have been like? We're coming up on 120 years ago. Anyway, Absolutely it's a great so. 10K trail system. It is accessible for dog walkers, runners, strollers, bikers. Um, Pike Ride, of course, makes it really easy to access the Legacy Loop. You can download uh, the Drop Bike app and uh, fire it up and find out where there is a Pike Ride bike closest to you. 30-minute rides are free right now, so you can get in your exercise, enjoy some parkland. Um, Parks Department has been doing a wonderful job of advocating on how to keep uh, yourself and your fellow park enjoyers safe while you're out there. Just increase that distance a little bit more. But my goodness, what a wonderful time to be outside, to enjoy nature, um, and to see others from a distance doing the same thing. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, could you go into a little bit of detail as to what exciting public engagement uh, your office is coordinating now and going to be coordinating for the summer? Well, I mentioned art on the streets briefly, but that is top of mind for me right now because I'm, I'm the person who runs the program that brings temporary works of sculpture and mural from around the world to our downtown for people to enjoy. And the great thing about that is it kind of is social distanced already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you can go enjoy a beautiful work of art and see others doing the same. And you can do that from an appropriate distance. Um, and it really is just incredibly hopeful to see these beautiful new works coming into our downtown. Uh, we just had the first one installed on Monday. You can follow us at Downtown CS on Instagram to, to watch all of our install videos. They're super fun. Um, but uh, the great thing about art on the streets is there actually is already an app for that that allows you to hear from the artists themselves. If you download Otocast, that's O-T-O-C-A-S-T, -O it's uh, free from the app stores, uh, iTunes or Google Play, and it actually contains a GPS enabled map so you can find your way to all of the new things as well as some of our beloved landmarks like Uncle Wilbur Fountain or um, the historic statues outside the Pioneers Museum. For each stop, you're going to hear from somebody, either the artist who made the piece 
or from somebody who was involved with its making, and they'll give you the backstory, the fun uh, storytelling that will really allow you to connect with uh, that work. Um, and the great thing is it's it's all ages. I, I know a local art teacher, I, when their elementary school was shut down, she sent the kids out for, with AutoCast for their homework to take selfies with the sculptures. Um, so great tool there um, that's going on. Uh, we also have a couple uh, virtual shopping events going on to support our local businesses. So uh, if you haven't checked out Virtual First Friday yet, it is coming up on June 5th. And at peakradar.com slash virtual first Friday, you are going to find videos and shopping links for galleries and other kinds of art businesses all the way from downtown through Old Colorado City into Manitou Springs. Uh, they've all got fun content to share showing how they make paintings, a walkthrough through the gallery, a talk with their featured artist, um, as well as chances to buy and really support local artists in a way that is meaningful, helps them pay the rent, which we love. Uh, the other way you can help downtown business owners pay the rent and see some great art is Social Distance Saturday, which is going on this Saturday and next Saturday until the end of May. Uh, you pay a registration fee for your group uh, online at downtowncs.com slash social Saturday. That registration fee goes straight back to the participating businesses, but essentially what it gives you is a private link to register for completely private shopping at up to five different downtown businesses. So using the portal, you get the chance to choose where you wanna go and you are assured that at your first stop, somebody is there to greet you, open the door for you, provide you with a reusable locally made mask and hand sanitizer from Lee Spirits Company. Uh, you will be the only person in the store for your 20 minutes and at the very end, they will walk you back out, open the door for you, touchless transactions, touchless shopping, and you and your household are assured of being the only ones in the store at the same at that time. So Social Distance Saturday has been a ton of fun really nice way to show local business owners some love while keeping both you and them safe. Great. Thank you very much, Claire. I think we're going to jump onto some questions with, Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm, my apologies. We do actually have one more question here. I had to scroll down here. Um, <laughs> what can the, uh, what can the audience do in the next coming weeks to support downtown COS and its recovery? I mean, that is a wonderful question. Like why is it important to support the downtown? Why are we so special? Well, a thriving downtown means better outcomes, better quality of life, better economic vitality and civic engagement for the whole city. If our downtown is doing well, everybody is doing better. So uh, a couple things that we can do to support downtown during this time. Um, get out there and discover something that you don't you didn't know about before. So parkland, public art, virtual retail, other kinds of distanced outdoor activities. It's wonderful to just be able to walk down Tejon Street, see others from a distance, wave, say hi. Um, it makes us feel connected again, and that's so important right now. Now, um, one thing I do want to highlight, because it's getting, it's been getting a lot of buzz recently, we all love our downtown parks, right? But we know that they need a little help sometimes. Acacia Park, Alamo Park, Antlers Park, they're supposed to be the welcome mats to, their, to, to the city. And because ballot measure 2B passed last fall, the Parks Department now has money to start to envision what they can do to bring those parks back to life and make them even more useful and loved by all citizens. Now, they've been doing a great job engaging citizens, talking about this, uh, and they've just put together their draft historic parks master plan. Now, master plan is a technical nice. term. Uh, it just means hey, this is the document that everybody's going to work from uh, to make this park a better place over the next couple of years. You can find that online. Just Google downtown Colorado Springs Historics Parks Master Plan. You can read what they've got in mind, but know that every single element in there was suggested by a citizen, and the Parks Department wrote it down and incorporated it into the draft. Now, I'm going, to address, I'm going to address one quick question because I've seen all of my friends asking about it. What's going to happen to the Acacia Park band shell? It's been there since the 1940s. We used to host swing dances down there. Why does nobody use it anymore? Are they going to tear it down? Band shell needs some love. Band shell does not have adequate electrical uh, wiring to support lighting and uh, modern uh, rock show equipment. Band shell does not have... Uh, bathrooms that are up to standard and uh, Banshell uh, has some structural issues that makes it less usable than it otherwise would be. For instance, it doesn't actually shelter you from the rain, uh, which we know is always a part of a Colorado summer, right? So um, that's right. We're, so the Parks Department has uh, recommended a structural study to determine what can happen to the Banshell. But some people 
thought that meant, oh, they're going to tear it down. The city's going to destroy this great historic landmark. That's not true. And the best way to ensure that doesn't happen is to engage with the historic parks master plan, write a letter expressing uh, what you think should happen, and really support our civil servants in uh, making this a good outcome for everybody. Because it's really exciting to see that the city has placed a priority on revitalizing those parks. I can't wait to see what happens next. And I know it's going to be better the more people engage with that process. Outstanding. Thanks, Claire. Um, we're still having a couple of technical difficulties with Alex. Would you mind sticking around for one or two more questions we had as backup? Sure. You want me to do my best Alex impression? He's, he's a lot smarter. Sure. Than let's hear it. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, That's awesome. I, I don't have the business acumen that Alex does, but uh, he's, he's working on the development side. I'm working on the public engagement side, but we're both working for the benefit of, of our downtown. So I'm happy to <laughs> I give you, give you the benefits of uh, what I know about what Alex is doing right now. Okay, thank you. Um, well, in line with that, would you be able to tell us about some future developments that are for downtown that you know about? Oh my goodness. Um, you, you just gave me the hardest question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, future development downtown. Obviously, I, we've got a bunch of cranes in the sky right now, and if you're wondering what's happening with those, uh, you know, we are getting ready to see the opening of the new apartment complex, the May on Cascade, uh, down there in the uh, southwestern part of downtown. Uh, another crane you're going to see in the sky is uh, the new uh, Hyatt Hotel next to City Rock. Now, hotel, big whoop, we already live here, but that used to be a parking lot. <laughs> and that's that's exciting to us because the more buildings we see, the less surface parking. I know everybody wants to find a good place to park, but trust me, it's already there. We have 8,000 publicly accessible parking spaces downtown. And what it gets us when we have a hotel instead of a service parking lot is that sense of density. We go downtown and it feels like there are wonderful things to do and see all around us. Uh, you know, that chimpanzee part of our hindbrain uh, sees a big empty space and feels vulnerable. We're about to get attacked by a lion. But uh, when, when we go into a city and we have that feeling of density because there are buildings that are thoughtfully designed to be human scaled, oh my gosh, that just makes our city better for everyone using it. Um, so we're excited to see cranes in the sky. We're excited to see that the Olympic Museum is almost to the point where it's ready to open. Uh, we're seeing progress on the downtown stadium. I was shocked to go down to that block the other week and be like, wait, there's a great view here. And this empty lot isn't empty anymore. How wonderful that we're about to have these kinds of amenities that are gonna attract even more visitors and dollars to our downtown at a time where that is sorely needed to boost our local economy. Fantastic, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your time, Claire. Unfortunately, we are still having a little bit of technical issues, so hopefully we'll have Alex on soon for a separate series, a uh, separate episode for our series. And thank you again, Claire, for all the information. Hey, it was my pleasure. I hope everybody has a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. It's important for all of us right now as a COS community to help with the recovery for post-COVID world. And downtown is a heart of our creative core, and it's important for students and the community at large to rally around it. So we really appreciate you joining us in here and listening all around. Uh, this ends today's uh, episode four, Feed Your Curiosity, and we hope to see you next week at four o'clock. Thank you. See you.